All right, with our else statement, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take all this code that we worked down above, and I'm going to comment it out using control forward slash there, or command forward slash if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to do password checker version 2. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set up a constant prompt. Enter your password. Okay. And um, I messed up password. There we go. I don't know why I forgot that. Const password equals prompt enter your password. We'll get that in. Okay. And we can do our check again. If password uh, equals one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, then we can do a console.log access granted. Okay. Now, this is the same as we did above, nothing new here. But what happens if we want to tell the person, uh, you know, when we ran the program before, if the password is uh, not 12345, nothing happens. And that doesn't make for a great user experience and really doesn't tell your users anything at all. So what we want to do is we want to be able to control the response to what happens if that condition is false. So if this is if it's true, what happens if it's false? If it's false, what we can do is we could use the word else. And we add it after the end of that last bracket there on line 52 here. So we have an opening bracket for the if and closing bracket. Anything that inside those brackets happens as a result of that if statement. But then on the outside of that closing bracket, we're going to put else, another opening bracket, Hit enter, and there should be another closing one that goes along with it. And now we can add another statement inside those brackets that runs as a result. So we can do console.log, and we can do um, access denied. Okay, and so what happens here? So if password equals 12345, access granted, else, this is options A or B essentially, uh, else, Console log access denied. Let's give it a uh, test run here. I'm going to enter the wrong password. Okay, access denied. So what did it do? It went to, I'm going to close these things real quick so we can take a look. It goes, it goes to this line, line 15, and it says, okay, if password equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it does a check on that condition. If that condition is false, okay, if it's not true, it goes to the next line, 52. And when it gets down to 50, well, obviously, you know, these, I just had these shortened, it really would be 50. Yeah, 52. Okay, it is 52. Yeah, so it jumps down to 52, and it will say, uh, okay, so it skips this line altogether, doesn't see it. Okay, it goes down to else, does a check on this condition. Now, we wouldn't necessarily need to pass in a condition here, condition here like password equals blah, 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 blah. Okay, we don't do that because in, with an else, it's, there's either two options. It's either... Uh, the option, the statement is true, or it's false. Right? Uh, there's no maybes here, so yes or no. And if it isn't yes, it's going to be no. So we don't need to tell else anything. We just need to say, okay, if it's not true, do this. You don't want, especially with the password program. We're, we're going to play around with this in just a second. I'm going to show you how we could add in maybe maybe options or third options. But here we don't want in a good password program. You don't want to have, um, you know, nine different passwords work on the same account. So you really, really shouldn't be a true or a false. There should just be a true. Is it the password? If it is, grant access. If it's not, I, I don't care what they write, that we should not allow them access. Now, a quick word about security here. This, uh, for anyone who's after ever tried a program, I mean, this is a horrible, horrible, horrible way to, to actually code a password program. And a full disclosure that I would never actually recommend you doing it this way. This is a very, very insecure way of doing it. You're putting literally the password inside the code that everyone can see on the browser. Uh, there's no way to hide this on the browser. The real way to do a password program <clears throat> would be to set up a like a database and store that information there. Or better yet, have somebody else do the authentication. That's why you have like login with Google, login with Facebook, login with Twitch, whatever it is, login with Discord. Um, because you don't ever want to store these credentials right in plain code. But 
for this this purpose, this simple program, we're just showing you how to do an if else statement. This is fine. Okay, so we have uh, an option A and an option B. Okay, for our program. And this is it. This is the main logic that you're going to be working with in the next couple of weeks with regards to phaser and building out our games. That we are, uh, now that we have the ability to have the computer think for itself, we can do a lot with that. And really, there's uh, only a couple more things we need to cover in order, to have you, in order for you to have a, a pretty basic uh, uh, baseline understanding of, of JavaScript in order to proceed forward. The last thing that we're going to talk about is going to be how do we get in um, maybe options? All right, so this is considered option A, B. What about if you want to have a scenario where it's like um, C, D, E, F, or these other possibilities, right? What happens if you want to have an, a menu of options that you want to have that person, um, a decision made based upon what that person says? And that's what we're going to take a look at next with the addition of if else, uh, else if statements.